million hours of work, create deer utopia, and offer everything a whitetail could want. But if you don't have the does, you're probably not seeing the bucks. The more you understand about does, the more successful you're gonna be in the deer woods. You wanna see more bucks? Keep mama happy. You keep mama happy, everything else falls in line. This is Land of Whitetail TV. It seems big bucks are everywhere. Every magazine, television show, even online, the hunting world seems to be all about bagging that huge trophy buck. And while that is the reason many head to their stands each fall, it's knowing what keeps those bucks coming back to your area that is vital to your success. Sure, there's safety, food, water, but to keep the bucks coming back, you better keep the ladies healthy and happy. You keep mama happy, the entire deer woods is happy. And happy deer means filled buck tags. Finding the perfect buck to doe ratio seems to be the holy grail for deer hunters. Are there really more does than bucks in your area? One of the biggest misunderstood factors of deer behavior are buck to doe ratios. A lot of people think mistakenly that does somehow far outnumber the bucks on the property because that's all they see. This is not true. Bucks and does are born at almost equal rates. And unless you're living in a very impoverished deer part of the country, your buck to doe ratio is gonna be about equal. It's more about the deer density and the number of deer than the number of does. The best way to go ahead and figure out whether you need to shoot those or not on your ground is just get out there in the spring and look. Look at your habitat. Your habitat and deer will tell you darn near everything you need to know. You don't need to know what whitetail's preferred browse species are. They're going to tell you, go out in the woods in the spring and see what buds are eaten and which ones aren't. And then just use a simple formula. If you've got 25% or less buds available of those species that they like to eat, you know what, you got too many does, you need to shoot some. If you're sitting between 25 and 50% of the buds that are easily accessible, that deer like to eat still available come spring green up, you're in the sweet spot. If you've got more than 50% of it left, you could use more does. You might want to lay off doe harvest. If you have land you hunt or own, the big question is always, should you target the does and which ones? The best way to keep does on your property is to lay off of those older does. Do not shoot those three and four and five year old matriarchs. Those does have established their home range, their core area as your property. And as we've known through scientific research, a mature doe, her home range is much smaller than a buck's and she's a homebody. So what you want to do is when you harvest does, you want to take out equal proportions of age classes, but you want to really focus on the younger classes most because those are the ones that are taking the most energy off the property. Those are the ones that are kind of the freeloaders on your land. If your goal is that big buck this season, don't discount hunting the does that buck will be chasing. Set your tactics to attract that group of ladies, and Mr. Big should follow. A really good tactic for locating a buck is hunting a doe and hunting a mature doe. If you can hone in on that mature doe and know how she's using that property intimately, how she's bedding there, how she's feeding there, how she's going about her normal day, you're really going to be able to pinpoint a buck. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. Analogix, protect your herd with the power of science. Thompson Center, America's master gun makers. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry technology. Apply, dry it, and go hunt.
Coming up next, Dan Schmidt is headed south. You know, everybody goes down to Texas for big bucks. I like going down there to fill my freezer. This is Land of Whitetail TV. Every deer hunter knows to focus their attention on does during the rut. The reason, that's what Mr. Big is focusing on as well. But don't discount doe activity the rest of the season. Once the rut is over, the chase is over, obviously, obviously deer go back to their feeding patterns. And do does still matter at this point? Well, yes they do, because like in the early season, you still have to be aware of what the does are doing um, you need to fool their senses as much as you need to fool the buck senses. So they're going to the food sources, the bucks are also going to the food sources. What you usually see though is the does go to the food sources much earlier than the bucks. So you're still going to have to deal with all these eyes, ears, and noses before the bucks show up. So you need to put up your defenses, you need to watch those does, take care that you don't spook them or you're never gonna see that buck. A big mistake people make when doe hunting is they want the big one. They wanna take out the biggest doe they see. They see six, eight does come into the field, antlerless deer, I should say, because some of those are gonna be buck fawns. They pick out the biggest, oldest mama doe and they take her out. They think they, think they really did a service to the property because they took out the biggest doe. The biggest does are the best mothers but they're also the best deer to have on your property. So don't always target the biggest doe that you see. Go after age classes and try to spread that out evenly across the age classes. Dan Schmidt is hunting free range land in Texas. He's been invited down to take out a doe and fill his freezer. Doe hunting in Texas, almost a slam dunk. You know, most Texas properties, these big ranches, have lots of deer, have high deer densities, and you can see that in how these deer react and how they behave in front of you as they're coming to a food source, as they're coming through, moving through an area. You're gonna see does of all age classes and that's the thing you really wanna key on. Does live in maternally related groups. What does this mean? If you look at an overhead map, interconnected circles across that property, the biggest does, the biggest, healthiest, mature alpha does, so to speak, they get the best property through that pecking order and down the list it goes. So those younger does, the year and a half old does, those first time dispersers, they're gonna kinda get pushed off to the marginal habitat. So think about that for a minute. When you're hunting, how many of us can go out first week of bow season, no matter where you are, and invariably, there'll be a year and a half old doe there. Most places, a first time mother, she's gonna usually have one fawn with her, and it's a lot of times you can kill a yearling doe off of that property year after year after year because probably that's the inferior part of the home range. Those bigger, older does are gonna be occupying the better parts of the home range. As a deer hunter, I have to tell you I absolutely love Texas. I'm talking low fence, free range, wild deer in Texas, West Texas, South Texas, doesn't matter. It is a fabulous place to hunt because the properties are huge. These ranches are measured in thousands of acres. Not little pieces, thousands of acres. So my buddy John Heaton from the Patterson Ranch invited us down. We're here, he's gonna let us shoot some does and he has a lot of them. It allows us to really check out the herd that he has, pick out the right doe and take it home with us in the freezer. A lot of these ranches are managed pretty strictly by the state. They're given ample amounts of doe tags but they must fill them. So we're down here, it's February. It's the waning days of their deer season, which is really cool. I've never hunted whitetails in February before. And what I really got to see here was, you know, this is a deer herd that went through all the cycles already. Went through fall, went through winter. Winter's almost over. These deer are almost flocked up again like turkeys. There really were no rules here, but John wanted us to kill some mature does if possible, because he really wanted to bring that herd down. Too many deer on the landscape, plain and simple. So the second night, we're watching a field, tons of deer coming out, and it really gave me an opportunity, because Texas deer are different. 
When you talk about aging deer on the hoof, this is where it was perfected, because you can do it in Texas very easily. Not so easy in other parts of the country, in my opinion, just can't be done. But you can do it here in Texas, even on does. We have a bunch of deer come in, there had to be six, eight, ten of them in front of us. I picked out the biggest, most mature one. She actually seemed like the most dominant doe, I don't know that for a fact, but we knew she was definitely the mature mama in the herd. Another cool thing is I got to hunt with my Horton crossbow, and I love shooting that thing. It is so flat and so fast that once I have a deer in my sights, I know it's gonna be money, and that's what happened. This doe came out, she presented a great shot, made the shot, she made it to the wood line, but she didn't go much farther than that. Walking up on this doe, mixed elation. Not emotion, elation. Happy about everything. It's a new whitetail bolt from Carbon Express. Look at this. Happy that we got a chance to come down here, visit with John, and see his plays. Also happy that we got to take out a really nice, fine doe off the property, and we're bringing home some of the best venison you can eat. I love Texas, and I really love Texas venison. If you're hunting Midwest, Northeast, and you're hunting for does, in this case, we had a chance to size this doe up compared to the other ones that came in. She's a mature doe, the kind that we want to take out, especially on this big of a ranch. Free range Texas, West Texas ranch. We're here with John Heaton, and uh, just very happy. Don't underestimate doe hunting. A lot of people think it might be passe. It's not passe to me, it never gets old. So many positives about it. It's a great way to get out there and enjoy the outdoors. It's a great way to really learn your equipment, whether you're crossbow hunting, bow hunting, rifle hunting. Extra opportunity there. Awesome way to introduce new people into hunting and just a really good way to manage the resource. If you are a deer hunter, you probably have a love for being in the woods. And while the goal is a once in a lifetime buck, you can have just as much fun targeting does. The biggest thing that determines how many does you should take off your property is your general area's deer density. I cannot stress this enough. Not just the deer you're seeing on your property, but your county level and even your region level. You can find this out very easily, but go to one of your state biologists, find out what your deer density is. Across the country, deer densities are pretty high. If you have a deer density anywhere over 35 deer per square mile, you wanna take at least one mature doe off of every 40 acre property that you have. So if you have three, four, five 40s, you're gonna to wanna to take three, four, five does off that property if your level, if your deer density is at or above goal. The way you keep a good portion of does on your property is you offer them everything they want and need on that property, that safety, that is comfort, through spruce plantations, for example, that offer both shade and thermal cover, that is prime food. You offer them good food with bedding close to that food source, and you know what, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be bedded close to that food source in that prime bedding right next to that food source. So all they have to do is get up, take a few steps, and they're eating dinner. They're eating breakfast. They're getting a midday snack. Offer them the best food, water, comfort, feeling of safety that you can get in that area, and you're gonna have plenty of those that are staying on your ground. Dan Schmidt is back in his home state of Wisconsin. He has a perfect location picked out for an early season bow hunt should you be targeting any does. It's been for years now, almost 20 years, two decades worth of this mantra, kill the does, kill the does, kill the does. Should you still be killing does? That's something only you can answer depending upon the property that you hunt. Is your property overrun with does? A lot of properties have come down in deer density to the fact that there's not that many does out there anymore and states are still giving out the tags. Why are the states still giving out the tags? Because overall, deer populations are still high in most states. So there's a lot of doe tags available. 
you have to decide how many deer do I have on my property? Do you have enough that you can take a couple off of there? Most properties have that. Some properties though, especially small properties, and this is what I'm used to, I don't own land. I've hunted free by permission, I've hunted leases, I've hunted a hodgepodge of properties over the years, and most of them are small. Most of them are, it could be 40 acres, 80 acres, 100 acres, all less than 200 acres here at home for me. And on a 200 acre property, which you have to understand, 200 acres or less, is a healthy deer herd per square mile per 640 acres is only 35 deer. Of those 35 deer, half will be does, females. A lot of those are young ones, are, are doe fawns. That's the ones you want to focus on. When you understand how does live on a landscape, it's pretty complicated. It's a very complex social behavior among whitetails. The older a doe gets, the smaller her home range gets, just like a buck. But with a doe, those matriarch does, the older does, they occupy, through pecking order, they occupy the best part of that habitat. And that's why you're gonna see that big doe with two fawns every year in the best part of your property. And that's why you're gonna see a yearling doe almost always on the fringes of that property. They get kicked out, they get pushed to the lower rent areas of any property. So those are the does that I want to target number one because the big mature does, I want to keep them around at least through gun season because that means they're going to stay around through at least through the rut. Yep. And if a doe's yep. home range, which we know is about 200 acres, if that big mama doe is living on the property that I'm hunting, I want to keep her around during the rut because she's not going anywhere. She's not like a buck and going to be traveling 5,000 acres during the rut. Uh-uh. She's going to be in that little 200 acre spot waiting for the bucks to find her. So I want to keep her around. I want to put some meat in the freezer. I'm going to shoot a yearling doe first and foremost. I'm going to do this almost every single year. You know, early season is the time to target does especially younger does, year and a half old does, two and a half year old does. Those older matriarchs you want to leave around for the rut, but this is a perfect eating size deer. She was all by herself, didn't have any fawns with her. This one is going to be some great venison. Coming up next, perfecting your setup in growing Big and what you should be doing right now to get ready for the season. This is Land of Whitetail TV. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, more deer, fewer blanks. Analogix, protect your herd with the power of science. Thompson Center, America's master gun makers. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply, dry it, and go hunt. Growing Big with Steve Bartilla. Personally, I don't think you really want a one-to-one -one buck to doe ratio. That's not natural. It's not natural because frankly, bucks in nature have a higher mortality rate. And if you want to manage deer, that is just too tight for management purposes because bucks, man, they're gonna to try to kill each other. And if you've ever seen two mature bucks go at it in a fight, it isn't pretty. They are out to kill each other if you have any doubt on how much stress that places on whitetails, go ahead and take yourself a shed off a three and a half year old animal and try to just snap off a tine. It takes a stupid amount of force to do such a thing. Now imagine a four and a half, five and a half year old buck with that main beam snapped right off. The tighter the ratio is, the more competition there are between those bucks for those does. The more competition there are, the more they're going to try to kill each other, the more broken tines you're going to have, the higher your buck mortality is going to be. It's great for hunting, but it's horrible, horrible for management. You know, personally, I like about a 1.5 to 2 does for every buck. That's about the sweet spot. Next, you want to manage those does. When you're trying to manage your ground, those does that are betting on the neighbors and jumping the fence to come feed on you, they're evil. They work against your goals because here she is. She jumps that fence in the afternoon. She comes over and feeds on you all night and then she jumps the fence when she's going back to bed. Now here comes Mr. Big. 
Mr. Big's coming along. First thing in the morning, he smells scent trail that she's left and she is going to lead him to his demise because when he gets that fence, guess what he's gonna do? He's gonna jump it and your neighbor's sitting over there waiting to kill him. So when it comes to doe harvest, I always start by harvesting the does that are bedding on the neighbors and feeding on me. The does that are on my property, the ones that are literally living right on it, they are my best friends. They're my best friends because Mr. Big, he can chase them around all day long. They keep him occupied. They end up wasting more time on your property. <laughs> Aim small, miss small. How many times have you heard of this in archery and especially bow hunting? You know, I wanna tell you something. When you're bow hunting, think of a deer's chest cavity as two compartments because that's what it is. You have the thorax, that's where the heart, the lungs, and the liver are. And then you have the stomach cavity, that's where the intestines are. You wanna hit the thorax, obviously, to kill the deer. When you're practicing, you wanna practice a lot of these quartering away shots because we know that's the best angle you can take when bow hunting. Try to hit that thorax, but when you're gonna do that on a quartering shot, you gotta aim a little bit farther to the right or to the left, whatever way that deer is facing. So we're gonna take a couple shots here. When the arrow hits, you're gonna be deceived. You're gonna think, oh man, that arrow's too far back. But on the angle, uh-uh, that angle's gonna take that arrow right through the thorax. You know, this shot right here was slightly quartering away and that's why I put it right up here. I could have even come back a little bit. You see where the lungs are. And what I want to do is I want to take it through both lungs. So I want to think about where that arrow is going to exit. If he's more, more severely quartering, I'm going to aim way back here, almost in the, almost in the intestinal area, right, right in the liver and both lungs, kill the deer very quickly. Be sure to check deer and deer hunting out online and on Facebook.